thank you very much. Um, like she said, I'm Stacy Woodworth and I am the Public Health Emergency Planner at the Health Department here in Centerville. And I'm going to take a different course and hopefully provide you with some information and resources on ways to get prepared for a potential disaster. So we need to assess all of our hazards. There we go. Okay, great. So the pictures are small, but the one picture here, that is actually um, the Ken Island Yacht Club, Ken Island Yacht Club um, during Hurricane Isabel back in 2003. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with beach traffic. <laughs> And it's been a busy year for us. Um, we've had several hurricanes and quite a few tornadoes as well. So it's important that we are aware of all of the potential hazards in our area. So we also need to assess um, our needs. So if you're a care provider, um, how fragile is your recipient? Are they bedridden? Are they confined to a wheelchair? What type of assistance would they need in an evacuation? Would they need more than one person to help them get to um, a shelter? Is there community transportation available? And if there's a service animal, like a dog, are they able to come to the shelter with you? So it's up to us as, or I'm a part of a team, on a state and local level, we create plans for the public for a safe evacuation to handle any type of disaster. But it's up to us as individuals in the community to be aware and make sure we know how to provide our own safety. So some ways to do that is to recognize and engage your support network. Who will you call if you need help? Be aware of what equipment and supplies you would need to take with you if you did have to evacuate. Um, shelters have wheelchairs, but if you need a walker or an oxygen tank, you may need to make arrangements to have that come with you. There are all types of community resources available and a lot of them are free to access. So preparing your care recipient. Um, it's important that you have a detailed description and needs and medical information prior to when you have to evacuate. Um, you're going to be stressed out and you might not forget how many times you have to take a medicine. So it's um, great to have all of that written down. Um, it was handed out to you, uh, the handout, Keep It With You. That provides all of the documentation for your medications, if there's any drug allergies, uh, previous surgeries, just all of the important information that might leave your head if you're stressed and that will help the um, staff at the shelters. Um, okay, so like I said before, gather your special equipment, keep your emergency supplies in a special area, show others how to operate your equipment um, because if you need help then they'll need to know how to use it as well. And sadly, um, most of us are unsure of what to even do, what to prepare for, what to, to pack when we have to uh, evacuate or if we should. But there's two types of plans. One is for an evacuation and one is for um, to shelter in place. And in your, you have water bottles that are in everyone's bags. There is a handy dandy brochure that we have put together and it's called Plan 9. It is nine items that you could put in a plastic bin to have on hand if you were to shelter in place. That way you know that you will have a flashlight with batteries that work, you'll have canned food, you'll have water, and they recommend to have all of that supplies for three to five days. 
if you're ever to go without power. Okay, so if you were to have to evacuate, um, these are just some of the items that are important to bring with you. Like I said, any assisti assistive devices, um, special equipment will not be available at a shelter. We have wheelchairs, we have a couple of um, oxygen concentrators, and first aid equipment. Um, bringing comfort items, um, at the last shelter we just set up in July for the tornado, there was a lady who brought her knitting with her and it was beautiful. So she was very comfortable at the shelter. If you have any um, incontinence products, hearing aids, batteries, eyeglasses, make sure all of that comes with you so you can be as comfortable as possible. And medication too. Okay, so as a caregiver, um, it's important for you as well to know what the public warning systems are. And in that bottle as well, um, I have put the instructions on how to res register with Everbridge. Everbridge is a notification system that can actually pinpoint the area of where you live. It comes from out of the um, emergency services. Be sure to know what special aid is available in the community where you are providing care. And would your care agency be able to assist you at a shelter? Would you be able to get relief? Um, and it's important that you create your own plan as well. Let your um, support network, if you know that there's a hurricane coming and you're gonna be working, let your support network know where you're gonna be and maybe have someone in that network have a key to your house so you can take care of your, so they can take care of your pets or do whatever they need to do. Okay, so what you can expect at a disaster shelter. These are actual pictures from July. Um, this, we set up the shelter at the Centerville Middle School. We the team of us that were there, we were exhausted, but we managed to put together over 90 cots. Mary was there, I think Mary took them down for us. <laughs> and I have blood blisters and pulled muscles <laughs> to show. Um, the American Kennel Club came with their past pet disaster relief as well as the animal control. Service dogs are allowed to be with you in the shelter. However, if you need to bring your pet, they had a designated area for pets, which was really nice. And then that's the Red Cross bringing the lovely cots. So I just wanted to let you know of what to expect and some of the agencies that go into um, setting up a shelter. It's not just calling a school and saying, hey, we're coming. It's all of these agencies working together Social services is the lead. Um, they handle all of the intake and provide um, assistance. Emergency services is there. They can be notified to help with transportation and provide medical care. The Board of Education, of course, because that's at the schools is where the shelters are located. Law enforcement provides safety. Community services, which um, during the tornado was amazing. Um, they provided um, transportation from some of the residents on Kent Island to Centerville. The Department of Health, um, Public Works um, helps with getting equipment there and the American Red Cross prov provides some volunteers. So I'm with the Department of Health. Um, we provide basic nursing support services. Um, we do over-the-counter medications. We don't have a drugstore set up. We have 16 cots that are medical beds that can um, elevate and go down. Blankets, first aid supplies. We have oxygen concentrators for only two people. And we have refrigerators if your medication needs to be refrigerated. So, shelters are not a fancy hotel. <laughs> Privacy is extremely limited. You will probably be sleeping next to someone you have 
no idea who they are. Space is limited. Bathing facilities are extremely limited. Meals are not gourmet, but they are good. Um, it can be loud, and there might not be enough cots for everyone. And you won't be able to have your pet with you, only service animals, like I said before. And there's just simple rules. You must sign in and sign out. Uh, you're responsible for your own property, no weapons or alcohol, and noise levels should be kept from at a minimum from 11 to 7. It sounds like a dorm room. <laughs> <laughs> and most importantly, if you don't feel well or if you become ill, please let a staff member know. These are just some helpful websites. Um, the ready.gov, I was going to show a video on ways to prepare. So if you go to the ready.gov, there is, you can type in any type of scenario and get information. So it's, it's very helpful. The CDC is a good one too. All right, thank you very much. Thank you.